symmetrical loading and geometry okay, based on symmetrical loading and geometry we know that a y is equal to what b y so when we carry out static analysis positive is going up summation of forces in the y direction is equal to zero we know that a y plus by b y minus p is equal to zero because of the fact that a y is equal to b y you have two a y minus p is equal to zero a y is equal to p over two and this is also equal to b y so now when we construct our shear flow that uh, shear force diagram you know that this is zero this is four feet and this is eight feet and this is our x and this is our v it looks like this so we know that the maximum shear force is p over two the minimum is minus p over two okay so therefore from here we know that vy uh, vp really vy is equal to p over 2 so therefore p is equal to twice our vy that we calculated earlier is what 3454 3454 so this will be equal to 2 times by 3454 6908 So this force, the maximum the fastener could take is what? 6902. Okay. Now my question is to ask you, if you want your joint to be stronger and you already bought your nails, what can you do? Repeat again, you bought your nails already. And then mommy says, I want to build an outdoor kitchen. What can you do? Yes. Okay. Increase the queue. You can't. You cut the wood already. You have not built a deck yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one option is go to Home Depot, get all your planks and return them by thicker planks. Okay, what's the other option? Yes. Yeah. So, add more nails means what? Add more nails vertically or spacing you reduce? There you go. You reduce your spacing. Are we clear? Right? Then you reduce your spacing. Then you come back to this calculation. If let's say you reduce, there, there's a limit that you can reduce your what? You, you can, there's a limit that you can reduce your what? Your spacing. If after you calculate M to work, so try to make what you learn here useful, not like, oh, I'm going to rely on artificial intelligence. Come on, I'm teaching you real intelligence for crying out loud. Okay, are we clear? Okay, so this is due to the fastener. The next thing that we are going to consider is we are going to consider failure due to the shearing stress. Okay, failure due to the shearing stress. So I'm going to look at the cross-sectional view again. So failure due to the shearing stress will occur at the where? Will occur at the centroid. Any idea why? This is because of what? How max? will occur at the web at the central are we clear because tau max will occur 
at the where? At the centroid. Okay. So now the question is, what are we going to what? What are we going to uh, calculate? Okay. So what the thing that we're going to calculate, we know that shear stress allowable is equal to what? So given to us, the shear stress allowable is 3, inch, three kilo inch. Okay. 3 times 10 to power 3. Eh, pounds. Uh, PSI. And with this, the formula we're going to use is VY over IZZ QZ divided by what? Divided by T. Okay. So now we are going to look at the shear stress allowable. Okay. So, sorry. The only thing that we don't know for now is we know IZZ. IZZ we are given earlier is equal to what? Uh, sorry to walk you around, all of you around like this. So IZZ is 2902. Okay, so IZZ we know is 2902. T, we also know T is equal to what? What, what we see over here is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. Okay, so it's one inch. QZ is what we need to find out. Okay, so QZ again, the width is six, the depth is four, the Y bar is five plus two. Plus, so this one is for the flange. The next one, right, will be for the web. So twice because you have left and right. And then the, the, the width is 0 0.5. The depth is 5 plus 2 plus 2. The Y bar is 5 plus 2 plus 2, then divide by 2. Okay. So this is for your web. Okay. So this will be equal to Calculator gone missing again. Ah. This one six eight. Forty point five. So one six eight plus by forty point five two zero eight. 0.5 inches cube. Okay. So this will be equal to 3 times 10 to the power 3. This is equal to VY over IZZ, which is 2902. And then your Q is 208.5. The thickness is 1 inch. Okay. So from here, your VY is equal to. 3 power 3 times by 2902 divided by 208.5 is equal to 41. I get 41.755 times 10 to power 3 pounds. And to relate with P, note that VY is equal to P over 2. Right. So therefore, P will be twice of 41.755 times 10 to the power 3. So 2 is equal to 83.510. Let me do a bit of shifting. Okay times 10 to power 3 pound force. And when you see this, you write, okay, uh, I agree. Yes or no, right? Like what we said earlier, the joint is the what? It's the weakest. So when this fail, when we apply this force, to fail the wood, this is failure 
of the wood at the what? Centroid. Due to shear. Okay, that is due to shear. Okay. And then the last one, okay, it's a bit of bending moment that's really straightforward for all of you. Okay. So the third failure, before I go into the third failure, anyone, any questions so far? This is crystal clear, yes or no, right? And then the third failure. Failure. Due to bending moment. Okay, so the failure due to bending moment. So the normal stress allowable is equal to what? Normal stress allowable is equal to 8 times 10 to power 3 PSI, right? So if we look at the formula, normal stress is equal to M uh, Z over I Z Z multiplied by Y, right? So we, we have this 8 times 10 to power 3. This is your MZ, which is what we don't know. IZZ is our 2902. And the Y, based on our cross-sectional view, over here, okay, when we section in between, right, so this is your y value, so this is 5 plus 2 plus 2 is 9, okay, so moment about z is equal to 8 times 10 to power 3 multiplied by 2902, and then we divide by the whole thing by 9, okay, so 8, So 8 power 3 times 2902 divided by 9. So it's equal to 2.57 or 2.580 times 10 to power 6 pound each. Okay, I'll do it again. Right. Okay. So that's the moment, and then we have to relate the moment to our what? We have to relate the moment to our force. Okay. So if we were to draw our bending moment diagram, so this is our X and this is our moment. The moment will pick at the center and then will die down. And this is where our M max is. Where the M max is, let me get the geometry first. So this is the geometry, okay? So we know that the distance to here to here is equal to four multiplied by 12. So this is equal to what? 48 feet or 48 inches. Okay, so the distance over here is in what? Is in inches, okay? So when drawing our free body diagram, so we know that this is P over two. If the distance from here to here, this is equal to 48 inch. Okay, this is equal to 48 inch. So this is our M max, okay? So M max is equal to 48 multiply by p over 2. So this is equal to 24p. So with that 24p will be equal to 2.580 times 10 to about 6 pound inch. p will be equal to 2.580 power 6 divided by 24 will be equal to 107.5 times 10 to about 3 pound force. 
Okay. So if we were to do uh, P due to normal stress will be equal to 107.5 times 10 to about three pounds. And P due to shear, and due to shear was what? Due to shear was, I uh, can't remember now, 83.510. P due to joints will be equal to what? Will be equal to 6908 or 6. Point. Okay. So which one will you choose? Which one will you choose? The joint. That's why when I say if someone is taller than you, it's going to attack you when you attack. So, we're there. I'll see you guys. Continue.